Hello, and thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion and You. My name is Dr. Sylvia Black, licensed real estate broker with Affordable Homes and Apartments, and I'm licensed to preach and ordained as a minister, and I have my PhD in Sacred Biblical Studies, and I'd like to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion and You. Now today I'd like to talk to you on a book that I have put together, and I'd like to start talking about it. It is entitled, and this is the DVD, Live Victoriously, Take Authority Over the Devil, and Take Back Your Power. Ooh, I'm so excited about this book. And this is what it's going to look like. Take Authority Over the Devil, and Take Back Your Power, and Live Victoriously, Take Authority Over the Devil, and Take Back Your Power. And praise God, uh, thank you for joining me today. And um, we're going to start with the first uh, introduction of it, which is pretty much a synopsis, and I'll go over to you, you know, the different chapters. If you're interested in getting a copy of the book, it is available on bondsandnobles.com, as well as Create Space and lulu.com, and you can go to my website at booksgaloreandmore.com in the form of an ebook as well as a uh, in print. I like to have mine in both, reprint and in ebook, so that wherever I am, I could just get my phone and I could just download it. And uh, there will also be a DVD that will also be available to you as well. Okay, um, I'm going to start out with the first topic, and it's going to be the same topic as the book. Well, no, actually, it's not the same topic as the book. It's entitled, You Can't Take Authority Over the Devil if you serve the devil. Okay? You can only take authority over the devil if you serve him God. You can't take authority over the devil if you serve him. Okay? Why? Because uh, the devil is your God that you're serving. And so you're serving him so you can't take authority over him because right now he's your master. If in fact you are sinning. Okay? So you can't take authority over your master. You now have to Come over to God's side, and I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to talk about a lot of interesting topics in this book. Okay, and the book will be, um, actually I just ordered a copy of the book, so I should have it within a week or two. By the time, by next broadcast, you should probably, I, sh I should have a copy of the book. But it's Live Victoriously, Take Authority Over the Devil, and Take Back Your Power. Woo yes, 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 hallelujah. Now, Satan disguises himself as the angel of light, as we all know. Uh, he goes to and fro to see whom he may devour. I don't like to think of my late mother negatively. Even at her funeral, I didn't talk badly of her. I only spoke of good things I remembered. Uh, none of my siblings either spoke at her funeral. None of her grandchildren uh, spoke at her uh, funeral. Nobody really spoke. I was the only one that spoke at her funeral. Now, 1 Peter 3.10 says, 3.10-11 says, Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God is calling you to do. And he will grant you the blessing. For the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many, many happy days, keep your tongue from evil, uh, keep your tongue from speaking evil, and keep your lips from telling lies, okay? Um, now, at one time I felt that my mother hated me, but I had no clue as to why. I did everything I thought was possible in an attempt to make her happy. I never saw her smile except for in a picture, but I refused to be anything like her or allow her to turn me into what she had become. I can see if the doctor, you know, if, if she wanted me to be a lawyer or a doctor, and then she wanted me to follow after her footsteps in that regard. But I saw how her life and the life of others that she influenced was a simulation of a hell. And if hell was anything like what I had already witnessed, I was not going there. And I wasn't going to hell for anybody. A few months after I was born, I found myself living with, with her ex-husband and his new wife. Uh, he thought that I was his biological child. But it turned out that my mother cheated on him uh, committed adultery, and he was, however, my sister's real father, though. 
Okay, so my sister was my half sister. <laughs> so I lived with my mother's ex husband and his new wife for four years, the first four years of my life. And then Karen had to come back home to live with my biological mother, who made my life a living hell. She did everything she knew how to do and everything within her grasp to try to destroy me. But to her surprise, nothing she orchestrated was able to destroy or eliminate me. And in no way do I look like anything that I've been through. Okay, matter of fact, at a funeral, I didn't even recognize a lot of kin folks. They recognized me though because I looked almost pretty much the same all of my life. However, although I looked like I was in control of my situation, my situation actually was controlling me. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 19 New Living Translation says, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. Uh, we are hunted down, but never abandoned. Uh, we get knocked down, but not destroyed. Okay, through suffering our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Yes, we live in constant danger of death because we serve Jesus, so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. So we live in the face of death, but this in no, this has resulted in eternal life. That is why a lot of people today, uh, that's why a lot of people did what they wanted to do in the early part of their lives. Okay, and I'm not around today, but I am, and I have another chance to get it right. But they don't, but they had the same opportunity that I did. <laughs> However, at the time while I was being persecuted, it didn't feel too good, as I'm sure it never feels good when you're being persecuted. Uh, after a while, however, a person gets comfortable with being persecuted. <clears throat> not saying that you like it, just that you get used to people persecuting you, used to being abused and used. You expect it to happen, probably because of the kind of people that you are around. That's why God's word says, be equally yoked and come out from among them. I was so confused, but I knew that God would bring me out. I just didn't, <laughs> I just didn't know when and I didn't know how. I felt I didn't have control over my life because my enemy, the enemy, continually convinced me with fear and intimidation that they had the control. Okay. Uh, and either I do what they wanted me to do, or they took it, or they threatened me with my life. But as you can see, I'm still here, and I ain't going nowhere. Okay. I was never really afraid of them. I was. It was my way of taking authority, taking control. I had vowed that I would be nothing like them. I promised myself that I would not become what they had wanted me to become. And I promised myself that I would always trust in God and put Him first in my life. Okay? Though they slay me, yet will I trust Him. I promised myself that as soon as I get a chance, I would run to the other end of the earth. And if and if I had to, and if that wasn't far enough, that I would run even farther. My conviction was that I stay alive as long as I could so that I could outlive them. Because I, I value life. And I believed that one day God would allow me to start living my life according to His will. To be holy and righteous, live an abundant, victorious life, and have good success. And one day, I believed I would be happy. Romans 12, 18-20 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I will repay. Okay. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Okay, it took 40 years for God to use Moses, and Moses still didn't get to see the promised land. But I don't believe Moses went to hell either. God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. Okay, situations and circumstances that look like it is to your demise is actually a situation that is supposed to uplift you as a child of God. 
and open the door to your divine and perfect future. Everything works together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called, called according to His purpose. When I did finally break free, free from Mrs. Jail, I had to find out why me, Lord, why did I have to suffer? Why I was betrayed by those who were supposed to love me and care for me? Am I ever going to be happy or ever, ever able to trust anyone? To find someone who truly loves me after what I've been through? Are they even going to want me? Can they see what I've been through, you know? I mean, a lot of times you talk about these things and it sounds quite ludicrous, <laughs> you know. Where are your facts, you know? Anyway, God revealed to me that I was suffering as a slave to righteousness when I had searched his word. For doing what's right in the sight of God. Those who suffer as a slave to sin suffer for doing what is wrong in the sight of God by sinning against God. Suffering as a slave to righteousness is pleasing to God. Once I began to immerse myself in God's word, I began writing books, poems, songs, producing videos, I have a television show, and I had to know the truth for myself. Did I do anything wrong? Even though God's words clarified a lot of things for me, I still had a lot of work to do. Okay, a lot of work that needed to be done. I had to learn how to live victorious and take authority over the devil so that I could take back my power and let those who victimized me see the glory of the Lord being revealed. The devil had my power, or at least I thought he did. I was allowing his workers of iniquity to take control of me by sinning and giving in to the devil's tactics. I settled rather than selected. I was satisfied. I was content, I should say, rather than being happy. I wanted God to come to earth and fix it for me. But I realized that I had to do my part too. I wasn't sure I knew how, and I kept asking God for his help. But all along I kept professing, God will make a way. God will bring me out. God will provide. Or I know God's going to bless me. Or I may not see a way, but I know God's making a way. Meanwhile, I was allowing the devil to have my power. I would fight strangers faster and harder than I fought those closest to me who betrayed me. I don't beat myself up anymore for not doing more. Instead, God is helping me to understand what, I, what went wrong and why. I actually had to walk alone for a number of years, got, got my face out of the television and start spending more time with him. I decided I wasn't going to hang out in the same places anymore. I wasn't going to dress provocative anymore. I wasn't going to, I was going to talk right and walk right. I fixed myself up, gave myself a new makeover. And then I had to cut off those negative soul ties. I had to run in order for them to leave me alone. But like the song says, you can't hide from yourself. Everywhere you go, there you are. I had to learn how to face and confront those devils. Of course, the enemy once was in denial, and they didn't believe I really wanted them to leave me alone. I had to develop radical faith and understand that I have a right to protect myself and what God has blessed me with. Okay, it took me a long time before I was able to speak up for myself. What helped me was God spoke to me and said, my well-being is much more important than their well-being. And do not give away my jewels to someone who doesn't deserve it. Okay, most people can take authority in a heartbeat and say no and go. Others have to muster up enough faith and have to escape and have an escape plan before opening up our mouths to say something like that. The Bible says a soft answer turneth the red red, but a soft answer doesn't turn away the enemy. You know, so I had to develop words that I could say that were curse words that the enemy would understand. And sometimes you got to raise your voice so that they understand. They don't hear you when you're saying, oh, no, I don't feel like being bothered right now. You know, can you please leave me alone? You know, or, uh, maybe some other time, you know, you know, you try to talk soft and whatnot. No, I don't think I want to be bothered. They don't understand that. You got to be like, nigga. <laughs> you got to get radical. Right? You got to remember what it was like when you wasn't saved. But you still got to remember that you are still saved. Okay, so you try to keep it in perspective. You know, I, do, I watch Judge Judy sometimes, and she's a little woman, and I bet she's a very nice lady. Okay, but she calls people idiots quite a bit. She said, you're an idiot, and you're an idiot for listening to that idiot. And she can do that because she has a six-foot-some-odd-inch 
uh, black strapping black man with two guns in his at his fingertips. Okay, and you're on candy camera. <laughs> So yeah, if I was surrounded by those kinds of people and I'm on television, yeah, I can call you an idiot in a minute and I'm behind a pulpit. So I probably have a back door right behind me that I can run out of. Um, but that's another word that you can use to the enemy, you know, if you have to. A soft answer turneth away rap, but if you find out that you have to use any harsh words, then you better be able to run to the hills. Okay, from whence cometh your help. Okay. <laughs> okay. But it was going to be a virtually impossible to talk so up to those who had offended me for so long because they didn't understand. They didn't believe that I wanted them to leave me alone. They couldn't understand. They didn't think I remembered what I was saying. You know, they were like, what? Is she kidding me? As good as it was me stealing her money from her and whatnot, that was some good. And I didn't get caught for it. So I told them, I said, you know what? I said, now it's time for me to exert my legal rights. I said, since you don't want to listen to me, now I'm going to have to take you to court. And whatnot, and I'm gonna file a police report against all the wrong that I that you can that you've done legally against me, and I'm gonna have you uh, come to court and and possibly the if the uh, defense the, you know the court feels that it's a criminal act, then they'll take over the case, and I'll have no more control over it, and you more than likely you serve time, because I had to call the cops on this particular gentleman one time before for domestic violence, and it was like three or four times he kept coming back, he would not leave, and I had to keep calling the cops. So he used to have a job as a security guard where he was licensed, but now he can't get that kind of a job because he has a record. You see, ladies, so there's a way that you can hurt the man that's offending you if you so do it without putting your hands on him. But you have to do your part, too, and you have to use the law to work to, on, your, on your behalf. Anybody, for that matter, who has been offended by the enemy, but particularly women of domestic violence. Okay? Uh, like I said, it was going to be virtually impossible to talk soft to, those who, you know, to the enemy. Uh, unless I did it from a distance, <laughs> which I did on a number of occasions. I wrote letters, you know, I called them on the phone, you know, it worked, you know, but I had already ran, so, you know. <laughs> anyway, somebody's words have to be used, though. You can't keep quiet in times like these and uh, and expect the enemy to interpret your, the enemy interprets your silence as a yes. When you don't say anything or when you don't dispute or say no to the fact or whatever, even in a soft tone, they misinterpret that as a yes. So you have to say no. You, well, by saying no on your part, you authorizing uh, and, uh, uh, and accessing God's power. Okay? Uh, you can't take authority over the devil, however, and serve him too. If you serve the devil, then he's got your authority and he's your master. The devil does go to and fro to see whom he may devour. Don't take it personal, baby. It's the devil's job to see who he can kill, steal, and destroy. He disguises himself as an angel of light, as I said. But we won't be fooled anymore, because I got some tricks up my sleeve, too. Okay? Uh, Satan hates you and I because we serve God. Satan first hated God and tried to take over God's kingdom. But God said no, and he took authority. Uh, God took authority and put Satan out of heaven along with his fallen angels. God then paraded Satan around in public and bound him for a thousand years. Just like Jesus overcame the world, you and I will overcome the world. Okay? Uh, by taking authority over the devil. The workers of iniquity, the beasts of the field, the evildoers, and hell itself. In order to come out of something, however, we must go through something first. Okay, but recognize that as you are going through, it's just a test. It's only a test. If it hadn't been an actual emergency, you would have been instructed as to uh, when to pray. Okay, and most of the time, it's not what it looks like. Okay, we all know that it's never what it looks like. Okay, especially when all hell breaks loose. God has his hands on the controls and is working that situation out for our good, okay, instead of for our demise, towards our demise. Jesus dying on the cross didn't look like he had much power or authority either, okay, but he did, and now Jesus is seated at the right hand of our Heavenly Father, God himself. We have to uh, go through Jesus to get to God now, <clears throat> and... I that serve God will be seated at the right hand of Jesus. 
The same power that Jesus possessed, possesses that resurrected him from the dead is the same power that you and I possess that will resurrect us from our dead situations, our dead circumstances. Okay, and, and we will live victoriously. Once again, an abundant, lavish, plentiful life, just as Jesus promised in his word. And all, all we have to do is learn how to take authority over the devil and take back our power. And I'll show you how in my book, okay, and in the video that you can obtain. And you'll be able to get a copy of the video on Create Space as well as the book. You'll be able to get a downloaded copy of the book on my website, Books Galore and More, as well as an ebook on my website. Okay. Um, and Lulu, you'll be able to get a printed copy, lulu.com. Okay, barnesandnobles.com, you'll be able to get a downloaded copy. Okay, and now like I said, the same power that Jesus possesses, the same power that you and I possess to allow us to live victorious. And God promises us in his word that we will have an abundant, lavish, plentiful life. And his word goes forth and does not come back void. It accomplishes what it was set out to do. And we have to learn how to take authority over the devil and take back our power. And I'll show you how in this book. Live victoriously and take authority over the devil and take back your power. Okay? Once you start taking back your power, you will automatically take authority over the devil. You'll learn how to see through his lies. You begin to recognize the situation with greater expectation rather than with solemn attitude of defeat. Instead of looking at a situation as all hell breaking loose, you'll see the same situation as a breakthrough. Instead of seeing a situation as hopeless, you will see the same situation as hopeful situation. Hope is a good thing. Instead of uh, frowning when things aren't going well, you'll learn how to smile and praise God in the midst of your persecution. Just like Paul and Silas praised the prison gates open, we too will praise open the doors that have been shut for far too long. Doors that you thought would be years before you could walk through those doors. Doors you thought that would never open for you again. But we know that the devil is a liar. God made us a promise, and he promises, his promises don't come back void. They always accomplish what they were set out to do. Okay, God will finish a good work in each one of us, and I believe this with all my heart. No matter what your age, your financial status, or your situation or predicament, God always looks out for his own. <laughs> Praise be the name of the Lord. Okay, I'm going to conclude with this scripture, and we're going to talk a little bit about the chapters in the book. Now the Bible says, Matthew 16, 24, 27, then, then Jesus said to his disciples, If any one of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own life, okay? Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you'll save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? For the Son of Man will come with, the, with his angels in the glory of his Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, doing of his mighty, powerful, and magnanimous word in the name of Jesus. And I'm talking about my book. Uh, Live victoriously, okay? Take authority over the devil and take back your power. Okay, live victoriously, take back your power and take authority, uh, take, wait, wait, take authority over the devil and take back your power. And today I've been talking about, you can't take authority over the devil if you serve the devil. One reason is because he's your master. And a slave cannot take authority over his master. Okay, so I'm just going to conclude with talking a little bit about some of the chapters. Okay, next week we'll probably be talking about what does it mean to take authority. Okay, I also have, I talk about our authority in Jesus Christ. What is our authority? And how do we use that spiritual authority in, and, as our, and claim it as our legal right? Uh, breaking bondages, okay, that's one way that we take authority. Uh, using the power from on high, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. 
Okay, how to dress for success, putting on the full armor of God. Okay, uh, we talk, I talk about the fruits of the Spirit, which is another uh, successful way to dress. Okay, and then we talk about beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the spirit of praise for heaviness. It's better to praise the Lord than to be depressed. How to guard your heart and your mind. Okay, I talk about how you no longer have to live in defeat. How we rise above our circumstances. How the devil has no authority over you. I talk a little bit about the authority of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and how that relates to us. Okay, God gives authority to those who love him. Okay, the temptation of Jesus didn't diminish his authority. Okay, I talk about don't let your heredity destroy your power and live victoriously. Sufferings are power and authority in disguise. When praises go up, power comes down. Okay, I talk about Jesus' redemption at the cross and how redeemed, we are redeemed from the curse of poverty. How God gives us the power to get rich. Money is not the root of all evil. Okay, uh, I'll talk about how some people are serving the wrong gods. Ways to defeat demons. Okay, uh, vital keys to deliverance. Okay, how to submit uh, 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 to God and take authority. I talk about how the world didn't give it, can't give it, and the world can't take it away. I talk about have hope based on knowing God's will for you. Have faith in the grace of God, knowing the truth and submitting to God. How we can resist the devil and he will flee from you. We draw nearer to God and exert your authority. Okay, and let love be your your greatest goal and motivation in all things that you do because we all know that love is God and God is love okay I talk about how we can bind the devil we can identify areas of your demonic influence we can command those demons to leave and take up your cross and follow Jesus uh, there's a little few other little chapters in there and of course about the author which is me I wrote this book and uh, didn't take very long to write it I'm editing it now so if you'd like to get a copy of it now, you can. Um, I just want to edit it to make sure that everything is, it's entitled, Live Victoriously. Take authority over the devil and take back your power. Okay, and I think it's essential because a lot of us are suffering and we don't have to suffer. A lot of us are living below our, beneath our means and we don't have to live beneath our means anymore. You know, all we have to do, we have power and authority. And we need to exert that power and authority instead of complaining all the time. We need to exert our authority in Christ. But you can't take authority over a devil if you're serving him. So the first thing you need to do is probably more than likely repent and come over to the winning team. Okay? And you can get a copy of this book and um, any other book that I've talked about. The Giants book as well is also available. Uh, it's called Live Victoriously and Take Authority Over the Devil and Take um, Back Your Power. And I've been talking today about you can't take authority over the devil if you serve him. Why? Because he's your master, and slaves don't have power over their masters. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion You. And I've been talking about my book, Live Victoriously. <clears throat> take authority over the devil and take back your power. I think it's very important for us so that we can start living the life that God has ordained for us to do, living victorious and stop complaining and stop letting the devil play tricks on us and stop letting him convince us that he's the master okay when God is in fact the reign supreme over everything and everything that happens in our lives God allows it so I want to thank you for joining me today holler to sister peace out